Our scripture reading this morning will be from Psalm 146. Psalm 146. Here the psalmist is presenting a message for the following generations of the people of God. To all the generations of the people of God, he's presenting a message. And the message is that the Lord, the Lord reigns forever. And that the Lord is the help of his people. And that the Lord is the salvation of his people. And that all who trust in the Lord are blessed. That all who trust in the Lord are happy, are satisfied. And that we mustn't trust in any man. That we mustn't set our trust on any person but the Lord. And at the end of this psalm, we are told that this is direct. This is directed to Zion, to Jerusalem, to all generations. The psalmist begins with an imperative, which means a commandment. Verse 1 tells us, Praise the Lord. And what follows is the reason why the Lord must be praised. The reason why the Lord is worthy to be praised. The psalmist says, Praise the Lord. Verse 1, Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have been. Put not your trust in princes. Put not your trust in a son of man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that on that very day, his plans perish. Here we see that the psalmist is explaining the finitude of flesh. In simple terms, the psalmist is saying that all flesh perishes. And that the hope of those who hope in men shall perish with men. So it is an invitation to, to, set, to set our hopes not on that which perishes, but rather on him who gives breath, who gives breath to all flesh. It should be a it should be a no brainer. But in spite of the clarity of the text, our tendency is always to set our hopes in that which perishes in men. That is the inclination of our hearts as the natural bend of our hearts. But here the word of God is telling us that we mustn't set our trust in princes, in flesh. But rather he gives us a contrast in verse 5. And it says, blessed is he. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. Now why is this so relevant for us this morning as we are about to study the beginning of John chapter 9? The reason is because... 
This is a message to Zion. And what is the message? Well, if you look forward, uh, the beginning of verse 8, for example, we are told by the psalmist that the Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. And that's what we're going to see today in the scripture in John chapter 9, the fulfillment of this. So the, the connection is in this. This is a message to all generations. We are told this at the end of, of, the, of the psalm. In verse 10, the Lord will reign forever, you God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. And then we see in John someone who opens the eyes of the blind. So the right conclusion, because that is the question that is uh, implied in John chapter 9, that who is this man who has opened the eyes of this blind man who was born blind? Who can do this but the Lord? The message is obvious. The Pharisees, the, the leaders of the people, would have known this psalm by memory, by heart. And yet we see a willful rejection of him who is identified as the Lord in the Old Testament. Him who is able to open the eyes of the blind. So this is the connection that we are seeing. And why is this important? But I'm trying to put a connection. Rather, I'm trying to draw out to highlight the continuity and the fulfillment of the Word of God in the New Testament. I'm trying to highlight for us what the Scripture makes plain that Christ, that Jesus of Nazareth, is the fulfillment of of the law and the prophets. I'm just following the admonition of the Lord to the Pharisees and Sadducees. His declaration to them in John 5, 39. You study the scriptures with diligence because in them you believe that you have eternal life, but they are who give testimony about me. So here we see clearly that the psalmist is declaring to us, Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, the Lord his God who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that is within them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord open, opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves righteous. Lo the Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. In John 9, we'll see a man who is born blind, who is oppressed by illness, by disease. And Christ shows him mercy. Christ shows him, he sets him free. And not only that, but we see an objective lesson in John 9. And that's what we'll see this morning. But it's important for us that we understand that the Lord Jesus came to fulfill the scripture. And that proved with signs and wonders his identity to the Jews. And this is important for us to understand. That Christ, that Jesus of Nazareth, shown, he showed, he showed and proved to the Jews 
his identity. Nevertheless, he was rejected. So it is important for us to, to see the context, to see how Christ, in not so many words, said to the Jews, Listen, I am he of whom the scriptures speaks as a message. May the Lord bless his words in our hearts this morning.